Hi, uh, my name is Jordan Dolan, and this is Moments of Permission, uh, Rethinking the Workshop, a presentation uh, that is in some summation of my research and time with the Mellon Public Scholars. Um, I am a Mellon Public Scholars Fellow in the year 2020. Um, so as an introduction, uh, I came to UC Davis to pursue a Master of Fine Arts. Uh, with the goal of starting poetry workshops for people impacted by the carceral state. As a poet myself, the prospect of being in a graduate program filled with so much care and guidance and support without then seeking to function as a door for all that same compassion felt and, and continues to feel inconceivable. Uh, upon hearing about the Mellon Public Scholars Fellowship, I set to work immediately assembling an application that was ultimately successful, uh, a success for which I will be forever grateful. And I would like to take this time uh, just to thank um, not only Stephanie Maroney, but also Julie Shi, all the other uh, Mellon Public Scholar Fellows uh, for this year, and uh, a quick shout out to 916 Inc. in Sacramento, California, which uh, will become uh, increasingly relevant in a moment here. Um, my proposed plan in my application to the Mellon Public Scholars Fellowship was to create or serve creative writing workshops in incarceration facilities, particularly those that contained incarcerated children and teens, um, while also creating poetry workshops for members of the population who had either been personally impacted by the carceral state or who had family who had been impacted by the uh, incarceration incarceration systems reach. The thinking is that insofar as poetry is able to offer benefits to people impacted by uh, the incarceration system, it also serves to offer benefits to the families of those people. Um, those effects uh, are not limited only to the individuals, um, they're felt in families as well. And so I, I, you know, if we're able to offer benefit um, beyond the immediate individual into the community at large, I felt like the family was a good place to start. So everything was progressing smoothly according to my plans and then COVID-19 became a more dire global reality. My focus pivoted from my initial project due to the complications and logistical inabilities that a lockdown necessitated. After some searching, uh, I found my way into the graces of 916 Inc. serving as a volunteer in their creative writing workshops. 916 Inc. is a Sacramento-based nonprofit organization who focuses on creative writing workshops for youth and underserved populations, uh, working with schools of all types and age ranges, uh, ranges rather, as well as with local communities directly, like local parents or incarcerated people. Um, so. The initial considerations here, in, in, in Gaston Bachelard's The Poetics of Space, he posits that poems are at their most foundational level origins and consequences. So of course a dichotomous understanding of the fundamentals of poetry that is as inclusive as origins and consequences ought not to be relegated only to poetry and can instead be supplanted into a larger understanding of creative writing in its entirety. Um, one crucial point of contemporary literature's origination is the creative writing workshop, which is a pedagogical atmosphere whose implementation has both professionalized and popularized contemporary writing uh, as it has developed, both nationally and globally. Um, a brief history of the workshop. So the first creative writing workshop in the US was the Iowa Writers Workshop, you may have heard of it, uh, founded in 1936 by Schramm, but popularized under the guidance and promotion of Paul Engel. Um, Paul Engel, a poet, directed the Iowa Writers Workshop from 1941 to 1965. During this period, Paul Engel secured funding from groups like the Farfield Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the China Foundation. Um, they're donor groups who all shared one noteworthy similarities, ties to a Cold War era CIA. Described by Eric Bennett in his piece for the Chronicle of Higher Education as a do-it-yourself Cold War, Engel secured such a high profile for the IWW through the mixture of publicity and funding that it continues to serve as the ideal and indeed the origin for much of the tastes and proclivities and behaviors modeled through contemporary writing workshops today. This is what I'm talking about when I say origins and consequences. The consequences of the creative writing workshops origins in Cold War paranoia and anti-communist rhetoric have been carried pedagogically into our present moment. Simultaneously, 
that the valences of domestic judicial policy and social practices that created the consequence of a carceral state in this country uh, bear such a striking similarity to the origins of the creative writing workshop is neither coincidence nor inconsequential. Um, so contemporary artist workshop pedagogies, today uh, the contemporary creative writing workshops pedagogical foundations can be traced to structures and philosophies developed and popularized by Paul Engel and acolytes of his like Frank Conroy and Wallace Stegner, men who sought to rout out communist sentiment and arguments in writing uh, by prioritizing a hierarchy of importance that posited grammar and syntax uh, as, uh, as being of the highest importance and avoided metaphor and symbolism, which Conroy uh, referred to as the fancy stuff. Their maxims and aphorisms live on in creative workshops today, both within and beyond the university. The stylistic prioritization of show, don't tell as a core tenet of good literature, both within the university and within the market, is evidence of this. But what happens when the writing being done is uh, as it attempts to translate lived realities into syntactically and grammatically legible experiences is written by groups of people whose individual alterities are historically encountered by structures of power with a very poor literacy of that otherness. What can a creative writing workshop offer those voices who are certainly real and thus deserving of witness? So in comes 916 Inc. and the AWA method. Uh, lucky for the communities of Sacramento and nearby, there's 916 Inc. 916 Inc. is a group that uses and expands upon the practices and philosophies of the Amherst Writers and Artists method uh, within a curriculum that also borrows concepts of narratological autonomy and inherent self-worth offered in readings of Campbell's Hero's Journey. Um, that's Joseph Campbell. The Amherst Writers and Artists method or AWA method uh, is a pedagogical advancement upon the traditional creative writing workshop structures and practices and notions as they existed in 1981 and continue today. After the AWA Methods founder Pat Schneider emerged from the University of Massachusetts with an MFA of her own, her personal background and her experiences within a graduate writing program led her to recognize the need for an alternative to the current modes and attitudes uh, attitudes that are redolent through the uh, contemporary creative writing community that she had found herself in. Um, as we exist now in 2020 and, and hopefully in the future, I, I feel like there has been an increased measure of investigation and uh, excavation as to like trying to find better ways to be. Um, so, you know, the, the, the similarities between Pat Schneider uh, coming out of the University of Massachusetts and uh, our time collectively as Mellon Public Scholars in 2020 um, has all been about trying to be solution oriented and still serving the public in a time of, of difficulty. From this origin, Pat Schneider developed her method. Um, it's one that prioritized sentiment and feeling and lived experience alongside a core understanding that the writer is inherently valid and just in their pursuit of art at any level. So the philosophies and practices of the AWA, quoting directly from the official literature of the AWA, which you can find on the website, uh, philosophy, uh, the AWA method is based in the following philosophy. These affirmations rest on a definition of personhood based in equality, and a definition of writing as an art form available to all persons. Everyone has a strong, unique voice. Everyone is born with creative genius. Writing as an art form belongs to all people, regardless of economic class or educational level. The teaching of craft can be done without damage to a writer's original voice or artistic self-esteem. A writer is someone who writes. The philosophies and practices of the AWA as they're continued, their essential practices are thus. The following practices establish a safe environment where everyone is free to explore within their own writing and listen to each other with respect. Um, everyone's writing, including the leaders, is treated with equal respect and value. Writing is kept confidential and treated as fiction. Writers can refrain from reading their work aloud. Responses to just written work reflect what is strong and successful. Um, responses and exercises support the development of literary craft. So, so modeling the method, right? In a contemporary creative writing workshop like those held through the facilitation of 916 Inc., 
a requisite pedagogical strategy in service of the implementation of the AWA workshop model is found in the modeling of the AWA's philosophies and practices through the behavior and participation of the facilitator or workshop leader in the surround of the group. Workshop facilitators called wordslingers who participate in the group are thus amid the very same work that the rest of the cohort is a part of, trading and gaining reciprocally in the organic edification generated from writing and responding within a permissive and encouraging environment, whose chief concern is not production, but process. With a pedagogical model that prioritizes holistic engagement and organic generation through a balance of craft-oriented instruction, exercise, and reciprocal engagement, 916 Inc.'s efficacy in generating writing and developing literacy from its participants can be traced directly to its non-hierarchical programming by focusing on process uh, regardless of a perceived ability level. 916 Inc. engages with ages and demographics that vary from young children in elementary schools to uh, adults who are incarcerated. And while the complexity of the reading and the maturity of the content may vary, the practices remain the same uh, and are able to remain the same because they do not rely on varying measures of skill or ability, but instead proceed from an understood and inherent validity. So final thoughts, right? Um, on a personal note, it would have been difficult to do all of this under normal circumstances because we all in this Mellon Public Scholars cohort instead proceeded through abnormality. Um, the difficulties were far ranging in their scope and dynamic in their impacts. Um, I am forever indebted to the care and support of, as I said earlier, Stephanie Maroney, Julie Shi, um, Katie Peterson, my faculty advisor here at UC Davis, uh, and all the incredible staff of 916 Inc. Just one more time. It's often tough to retain a sense of delight in the face of so much difficulty, even when what you study and practice is as delightful as poetry. 916 Inc. offered me a place where I could engage expressly with delight in support of the delight and success of others. Like the poet Ross Gay asserts, our sense of delight is like a muscle. Joy is inhabited as much as it is lived. And so in lifting up other voices, my own sense of delight was exercised and thusly strengthen. This, I believe, is the basis of good public scholarship, care, and delight. Presently, I'm applying for PhD programs as I look to continue to engage with the pedagogical and creative practices that I learned through my time working in service of 916 Inc. and their curriculum and my own work and research. Uh, if you are interested in 916 Inc. and their work, I highly recommend visiting their website at 916inc.org. There are ample opportunities to support them in a variety of capacities, uh, and the work that they do is immensely satisfying. Thanks.